Today's Namaste Yoga is another in the series of Lakshmi classes. Hello and welcome to episode 168 of Namaste Yoga. Today's class is on Elephant Lakshmi and I'm going to be telling a story entitled Those Are the Tracks of a Really Big Elephant and um, it's an intermediate to advanced class today. You'll need blocks and a strap for today's class. Um, just to let you know about something coming up on March 15th, 16th, and 17th of 2013, we're going to be doing a real-time spring clean yoga retreat on our membership site, complete with meditation, walking meditation, yoga classes, and recipes with cleanse-friendly meals, and a Google Hangout on the membership site. This is completely free for those who are already members. And if you're not already a member, I would love to have you join us for this. And you can do this by becoming a member. And you can check out how to do that on melissawest.com. There was so much response to episode 167 of Namaste Yoga last week on unleashing your creativity and goddess Shasti and the black cat. People just love that class. And I'll just pull bits and pieces from the comments that came from the membership site on that. There was loads of comments on YouTube and Facebook on it as well. But I'll just pull some pieces. <laughs> um, so Ivy says, this is the best class ever, next to episode 72, of course. I loved starting outside. The story was great and made me see how I steal my own time to be creative and then blame others. The mudra was great too. Donna says, an amazing class. The story is a magnificent start. My class is such that I myself am the only possibility for the black cat. Sue said, Melissa, thank you so much for this class. Loved keyhole on half hero stretch. Felt so good. Like Donna, wild thing pose was difficult, but I was happy I could do it. The class was perfectly timed for me. The black cat is definitely me. I need to take responsibility for not unleashing my own creativity. And Maya said, I had some insights about my own creativity. Perhaps I do have some. I just don't think it's special enough. I can't sing, play an instrument, or dance. I always think my own creativity isn't special enough to be expressed. And since I've been caught up against some challenges in the last couple of weeks, the slow pace of the class gave me a chance to say hello to my impatience and just simply be with it. And those are just snippets from the membership site. There were so many more on YouTube and Facebook that I don't have time to share them all with you now. Thank you so much for leaving your comments and five-star ratings on iTunes and YouTube. I do get to responding to them as quickly as I can. You guys leave lots of comments, and I appreciate that so much. There's instructions on how to do that at thankyoumelissa.com. Thank you to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for our awesome clothes. I can pretty much wear clothes with our themes. Today I'm wearing a Dancing Ganesh top for our elephant theme today and thank you to dusky leaf for our props and mats and all those great things at duskyleaf.ca so today's class namaste yoga 168 elephant lakshmi those are the tracks of a really big elephant tim wants me to tell you that 168 means there are 168 hours in a week so now if you really wanted to you could do namaste yoga for every hour of the week, which here <laughs> on public television, we have these things where they, in uh, Canada, where they run TV and ask you for their money, so <laughs> they could do <laughs> we could do that for Namaste Yoga now, or they could do that on public television. You could run 
uh, namaste yoga for an hour all week long now. <laughs> that would be crazy. <laughs> uh, okay, so you need a prop, you need a block and a strap, or you may need, and that's what you'll need for the, today's class. And I think I'm going to start you guys lying down today to receive the story. The story is one you've heard before, and then we're going to focus in on the fact that there are elephants in the story and talk about the significance of that today. So go ahead and settle yourself in. Let your body rest into the ground. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out of your mouth. And feel yourself settling into gravity here. Feel your head heavy. Let your shoulders sink into the ground. Feel all your bones settling back. And if your low back is tender, you can always bend your knees and place your feet flat on the ground. So Elephant Lakshmi is also known as Gaja Lakshmi. And she was born out of the churning of the ocean of consciousness. And this form of Lakshmi comes from the story Samudra Manthan. And she is known as the daughter of the ocean. She is both the benefactor and defender of wealth, prosperity, grace, abundance, and nobility. Gaja Lakshmi sits on a lotus with two elephants by her sides who bathe her with water pots. She wears red and holds two lotuses in her upper two arms, while her lower two arms are in the abhaya, the gesture of um, reassurance, and varada, the giving mudras. So the myth of the Samudra Manthan begins with Indra being offended being sorry offered <laughs> the offending comes in a minute <laughs> he begins with indra being offered a garland by a great sage indra ignored this gesture and praised, placed the garland on the tusk of his elephant who eventually trampled it the sage became furious and cursed indra and the other gods saying they would eventually lose their powers there's the offending this began to happen and the gods lose their, lost their powers and began to lose their battles against the demons. Indra ran to Vishnu for help. Vishnu suggested that the gods could turn the ocean of consciousness to gain the nectar of immortality in order to regain their power. This was a huge task, however, and they would need the help of the demons. Eventually, they all agreed to work together. Shiva offered Mount Mandara as the churning stick and Vishnu's form as Kerma. The tortoise became the back on which the churning could rest so the entire universe would not rip, rip apart from the churning. Shiva's serpent, Vasuki, volunteered himself as the turning rod so that the pole, Mount Mandara, could be pulled from side to side. The churning of the ocean began. As the churning began, the first thing to erupt from the ocean of the consciousness was the deadly poison that could destroy all of creation. And Shiva swallowed the blue liquid and the churning continued. Many wondrous things came out of the churning of the ocean of consciousness. Chandra, the moon, an elephant, precious stones, a magical tree, a wish-fulfilling cow. But the most amazing thing of all was Lakshmi, the goddess of abundance. Nobody had seen anything as beautiful as Lakshmi before. Everybody forgot their troubles in her presence. Lakshmi promised abundance and material wealth. And she also promised children, love, and beauty. We have told this story a few times before on Namaste Yoga, and I'll link to it in our blog notes. We told it in episode 149 on how Shiva got his blue throat, and we told it in episode 27 on Lakshmi, the goddess of 
abundance and beauty. So today, I want to focus a little differently on the story, on the theme of the elephants that come up through the story. Earlier this week, I read the most beautiful story told by Eknath Eswaran, a beautiful spiritual teacher who translated the Bhagavad Gita, among other important spiritual texts to yoga. And he tells the story of a man looking for people living the teachings of Buddha, the way one follows the tracks of animals in a jungle. He went around talking to people everywhere, and whenever he found a person whose life had been transformed, he would exclaim, those are the tracks of a really big elephant. So today, as you reflect on that story, the tracks of the big elephant, in this moment, can you reach within to an inner knowing and confirm that your life leaves the tracks of a really big elephant? How have the teachings of yoga transformed your life in a big elephant track kind of way? In this moment, can you know that for yourself? Can you find the tracks of a really big elephant in your life? In today's class, we will focus on grounding through your legs and feet to create big elephant tracks and opening up your heart to create big elephant tracks in your life. So go ahead and create your intention. What is it that you want to receive by practicing your yoga today? And when you feel ready, you can go ahead and wiggle and stretch out. Okay, so we're going to stay lying down to begin. So a lot of our focus today is going to be on our feet. So if you don't have your knees bent already and your feet flat on the floor, bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor and grab one of those blocks. Place it between your knees. And really feel your feet on the ground and imagine creating elephant tracks on the ground. Okay, so press those big elephant feet into the ground and then allow your pelvis to float up off the ground. And on this version, just focus on your elephant feet. Feel all your toes on the ground, all four corners of your feet. Okay, so still stay connected to your feet and slowly lower your pelvis down. And you can hug your knees into your chest. If you don't have any knee issues, you can hold on, on at your shins. If you do, hold on behind your knees.
And then we're going to do this pose again. And this time, in addition to thinking about your big elephant feet rooting into the ground, you're going to open your elephant heart. So press your big elephant feet into the ground. And then this time, interlace your fingers and tuck your shoulders under and open your heart as well. So stay connected to your feet, feel them on the ground and lift your heart center as well. can untuck your shoulders and slowly release that down and you can just keep your block between your knees because we're going to go into a twist here to help release our spines for some of the back bending that we're going to be doing to open your heart in today's class so actually I'm going to get you to roll onto your side here keep the block between your knees because this keeps a really nice um, neutral alignment through your hips and knees so it keeps your knees hip distance and apart which i really love to keep your si joint safe here and then what you're going to do here is roll open into the twist and once you do that then wiggle your okay so i started on my left side i'm not sure if i said that to you i'm pretty sure i didn't so when you roll open to your right and then you wiggle your left shoulder up out and spin your chest up towards the ceiling look over your right shoulder you can also fill your space here underneath your right shoulder with a blanket and then this just does a really nice job of keeping alignment good here so that you're you don't have any uh, pain or less pain in your SI joint keeps that from that alignment in your SI joint from going off there really like Stay with your breathing. Allow your right shoulder to be heavy and continue to sink into the ground. Make sure your head's in line with your neck here. And then you can roll back and from here we'll come onto your right side so roll all the way onto your right side keep that block between your knees again your left knee stacked right on top of your right knee and then roll open into your twist and just wiggle your right shoulder out spin your chest up towards the ceiling and look over your left shoulder Again, you can feel that space there. And so I'm noticing my head wants to move sort of forward of my neck. Hmm. That never happens in life where you want to get ahead of yourself, does it? So I'm just going to bring my head back over my neck. That feels so much better in my neck too when I do that.
Notice what's happening with your breathing. Okay, and then come on back to the center. Just put that block off to the side because we're going to actually repeat this after we do just a little side bend here. So lie flat on your back, on your mat. Inhale, take your arms overhead. And exhale, bend your spine to one side. So side bends are great preparation for back bends as well. Keep your shoulders resting into the ground. And then come on back center. And inhale here. And with your breath out, side bend to the other side. <laughs> Make sure your props are out of your way so you can do that. Okay, great. Come on back to the center. And we're going to do that recline twist again. And this time we're gonna layer on so that we add a little back bend to it. So come to the center, take your arms out to the side in a soft T, lift your hips, pick them up and move them to the right side of your mat. Drop your knees over to the left side of your mat. Extend your legs straight out to the side. Lower your bottom leg down, keep your top leg out. And this time, spin your chest up towards the ceiling. This time, you're going to reach down and hold on to your foot. Okay, so this is called cat grabbing its tail in the yin tradition. And um, if you need your strap, here's this is why we, I said to have a strap for this class could use your strap to grab onto your tail. So you're going to look over your right shoulder. Keep reaching your tailbone down, breathing your navel back towards your spine.
And then go ahead and find a way to let this posture out of your body and come onto your back again. And let's just do little knees to chest in the center here. Okay, and then let's go ahead and build that whole posture again on the other side. So arms come out to the side in a soft T. Press up into your hips, lift your hips and take them over to the right side of your mat this time. And then let your knees drop to the... I'm sorry I said that wrong. <laughs> lift your hips, lower your hips to the left side of your mat. Let your knees drop to the right side of your mat. Okay. You're going to... Spin your chest up towards the ceiling and extend your legs out to the right side of your mat. Lower your right leg straight down. Keep your left leg extending. And then bend your right knee. Reach down and hold on to your tail. Fabulous. And then go ahead and let this posture out of your body. And from here, hug your knees into your chest. And I am pretty sure that was all I wanted to do here, but I'm just going to double check while we're in our counter pose. That is it. Great. Okay, from here you can roll to your side or tuck your chin and then rock yourself up. We're going to do some side plank now, some modified side plank. Okay, so what side do you want to start with, your strong side or your weak side? <laughs> Tim says strong, so we'll start with your strong side. Okay, so come on to your right side. We're going to do a modified plank. So um, come onto your right elbow and you're going to place it right underneath your right shoulder and take your legs alongside your body, knees bent, and you're going to pull your shoulder back underneath you and lift your hips off the ground and reach your arms straight up. I want you to focus on really lifting your hips. And then you can either look up at your left hand, or if your neck bothers you, you can look down. Okay, and then you're going to come down, and we're going to come up and stretch out that shoulder. Okay, so we're going to go back and do this again. Since so many of you enjoyed Wild Thing Pose so much last week, we're going to do a modified version of Wild Thing Pose now as a way to build up to Wild Thing Pose. I found another way to come into Wild Thing Pose 
last week after class because I was like thinking about looking at different people in wild thing pose and looking at how gorgeous that pose is and thinking hmm um that mine didn't quite look like other people's poses and so looking at the way other people came into it and found another way in so we're building up to wild thing pose again and i know a lot of you loved it so this is we're gonna uh build up to a modified version of it right now which is kind of cool so coming back down onto that right elbow knees are bent you're going to stack your hips make sure your left one is right on top of your right one here lift your hips right off the ground okay lift your uh, left arm up what you're going to do here is extend your left leg out and you're actually going to take it in front of you and lift your hips a little bit more and then you're going to take that leg behind you straight okay and open up so there's a nice modified version of wild thing pose And if you don't have neck issues <laughs> like me, you you could, so I'm gonna keep my chin tucked and this is a nice um, option if you have neck issues. But if you don't have neck issues like me, you can just let it drop back like with wild abandon. <laughs> but keep lifting your hips, keep opening your heart. come on down so that's pretty cool right modified wild thing <laughs> pretty happy about coming up with a modified version of wild thing okay <laughs> other side so we'll build this pose see this is where I know people are kind of surprised when they hear this but I have a background in we're doing the cleaning here as we're <laughs> teaching. <laughs> I have a background in cleaning, apparently, too. Don't all moms? <laughs> um, but I have a background in cleaning, but the point was I have a background in fitness. So in fitness, we, we learn how to layer things, right? So um, I know how to look at a pose and l learn, teach how to build it, right? Which is really great because that means... That is so fantastic because it means that, okay, here's how everybody can do it, right? Which is, I just love that, which is how we build real yoga for real people. Okay, left side. So it means everybody can do it at some level or another, right? That just gets me so excited. Left elbow. This is yoga that people can do. I mean, it's not a spectator sport. I remember the first yoga class I ever, I video I ever put in the, in the, in the VHS machine, and it was like impossible. I couldn't do any of it. It was so depressing. Okay, so I don't want that experience for anybody. It's funny how things like that stick with you, right? And it shapes you, who you become, and what you offer. Okay, <laughs> Ta tangent. <laughs> Come back. Here we go left elbow hip stack right hip on top of left hip hips lift so we're building again on this side take your right arm up we're just doing the plank here so here's your mod if this could be your version of wild thing and even okay so we're just we're just building this right now and so if you want to learn how to do wild thing and this is something that you want to learn how to do and you want to get stronger so you can do it learn how to do modified side plank And use your core muscles to lift you. Don't hang in your shoulders. Lift from here. Keep moving this away from your shoulders, okay? Don't hang in your shoulder joint. That's weak. This is strong. Okay, so you're gonna come on down. We're gonna take a break. You're gonna come up and 
Just stretch out your shoulders. Did you hear all that cracking in my hips? And Tim says, this is, this is our stretch out your elephant trunk. Okay, so let's come back and build a modified version of Wild Thing Pose. So come down onto your, onto your bent left elbow with your knees bent. Stack your hips one on top of each other. Lift your hips off the ground. Lift your right arm up. Okay, so first you take your leg out to the front and you lift your hips. Then you take it behind and you lift your hips some more. And then you keep lifting your hips up and opening your heart. Now if you've got a neck injury, you keep your chin tucked. If not, you can reach it behind. Okay, so there's modified wild thing pose. Keep lifting your hips, keep opening your heart. Okay. Whew. All right. So let's come back up and go back over to your first side. And let's look at wild thing pose again. So let's look at the full version of Wild Thing Pose. Um, yeah, so you could stay with the modified version on your elbow and just build it again like we did. So we're gonna come into plank. Hands underneath your shoulders, reach your legs behind. And then you're gonna bring your left hand to the middle of your mat and you're going to roll open into the plank. Lift your, I'm mirroring you. Right hand into the middle mat, lift your left arm up. Okay, so first you take your left leg in front and lift your hips, okay? Then you take that left leg behind, bent, lift your hips more. Then reach your arm around behind, lift your heart more. And if your neck doesn't hurt, you can reach it behind. There's wild thing pose. And if you want, keep your hand on your heart to stay connected to your heart. body and wasn't that easier after <laughs> all that preparation it was so much easier after we did all that preparation for me so I hope it was so much easier for you let's try that on the other side too oh I'm so happy that was so much easier this week okay I felt really nice in my body and it felt really good after we did all those twists and side bends to prepare our bodies so so nice so here we come again. So starting in plank. And then you're gonna bring your right hand to the middle of your mat and twist open into side plank. Bring your right arm up. Your left, your right arm up, yeah, because I'm mirroring you. And you take your top leg to the front of your mat and you lift your hips. And then you take it behind you and you lift your hips again. Your back leg is bent, your front leg is straight, and you open your heart. 
And you could take your hand on your heart to stay connected with your heart. thing pose. So that was to open our hearts in a big elephant kind of way today. That was fun, really fun building it today. Whew. Okay. We are going to go back to building our big elephant tracks again. So you're going to need your blocks for this. So we're going to do Parjvottanasana to get grounded into our feet again. So take your blocks, place them underneath your hands. Take your left foot between your blocks. Curl your right toes under behind you. Inhale. And exhale, straighten out your legs. Fold forward over your straight left leg. Your feet are both pointing straight ahead. Feel those big elephant feet on the ground. reaching your legs into the ground. And then bend your knees and switch your legs. So both your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle. Curl your left toes under, inhale. Exhale, straighten your legs. Okay, and then step your back foot in and put your blocks off to the side and come up to standing. Okay, from standing, since our theme is elephants today, we're gonna, you knew we had to do something with a kind of trunk-like theme. So we're gonna do the tree chopping pose where you inhale up and take your feet a little wider than hip width apart. And you're gonna exhale, you'll bend down um, with your knees bent and you'll chop as though you're chopping wood, which I don't, there's probably a few of you in our audience who have chopped wood in your life. <laughs> probably not many, <laughs> but you'll inhale and you'll exhale. Ha! So it's probably nothing like chopping wood, <laughs> but something like those of us who have never chopped wood would imagine it would be like. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Ha! And you need to make that ha sound too. That's part of it. We'll do this a few times. Ha. 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 Now you have wild wood chopping hair. <laughs> Good. Great. 
Let's do a little side bend here. So feel your big elephant feet on the ground. Root your legs down. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale and side bend to one side. As you reach to your right, really root down for it through your big left elephant foot. Inhale up, exhale, and you're going to side bend to your left and reach down through your right elephant foot. standing back bend so again really feel your big elephant feet on the ground hip width apart inner edges of your feet are parallel lengthen your legs long down out of your pelvis make sure your pelvis is level so hip bone hip bone and pubic bone on the same level and interlace your fingers behind you roll your shoulders back and down and then Let's do it, actually, let's do it. Um, let's do it this way, a little bit of a wave of the spine like Von de Scaravelli today, inhale. Exhale, reach up, open your chest. So inhale, fold forward. Exhale, root your tailbone down. Lift and open your chest. Hearts as big as an elephant. And then release that. We're gonna do some tree pose. So stand on your left foot, turn your right toes out. You can keep your toes on the ground or place it somewhere on the inside of your left leg, either above or below your knee. You're gonna do, use the lotus mudra and hold it open at your heart center. this on the other side so this time stand on your left foot turn your sorry stand on your right foot turn your left toes out to the side place your foot either above or below your knee draw up through your pelvic floor draw your navel back to your spine heels of your hands together spreading your fingers in the lotus mudra nice long slow deep breaths
Great. And then release this posture for your body. We're going to do wide-legged standing forward fold. Take your feet wide on your mat. Hinge. Roll your hip bones over your leg bones. Hinge forward through your hips. And then let your head drop. Let your spine roll forward. And from here, place your right hand on the ground. Lift your left arm up. Okay, so from here, you're going to draw up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back through your spine because you're going to just take your hand, place it on your heart again to connect with your heart center. Actually, just take your right hand and place it on the ground again and just take your left hand on your heart and use it to rotate it open more. And then lower down. And now place your left hand on the ground and rotate your right arm open. Okay, so now we're going to draw on that inner power by lifting up through your pelvic floor, drawing your navel back through your spine, connect to your heart center, draw your left arm up to your heart. Take your left hand down. Use your right hand to rotate your chest open a little bit more. And then rotate back down into the standing forward fold. Let your head hang here. And even just um, nod yes and no a little bit just to release your neck. Lift and spread your sit bones. And then roll your pelvis over your leg bones to roll back up to standing. Find those big elephant feet again. And toe heel it back in. Gonna come to the front of your mat. Do a little bit of rolling between downward facing dog and upward facing dog here. So at the front of your mat, Lift and spread your toes. Find your big elephant feet. Inhale, reach up. Lift your heart center, drop your tail. Exhale, hinge through your hips. Bend your knees if you need to. Place your palms on the ground. Step your right foot back. Step your left foot back. And you're gonna reach your hips up towards the ceiling for downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. You're gonna tuck your tailbone under. Come up onto the balls of your feet. And roll forward into upward facing dog. Big breath in here. And exhale. Come back into downward facing dog. And then again, same thing. Come right up. Tuck your tailbone under and ripple your spine forward into upward facing dog. And then come back into downward facing dog. And again, upward facing dog. Keep your tailbone tucked under, reach your sit bones towards your heels. And back into downward facing dog. Was that three? Do two more. Till one under. Keep breathing. And 
And one more. Reach your sit bones towards your heels. Stay long through your low back. Press the heels of your hands away from you. And back into downward facing dog. And then bend your knees and come into child's pose. And if child's pose doesn't work in your body, you can always lie on your back with your knees to your chest. You're going to slowly roll up to seated. We're going to sit with a mudra before Shavasana. And I feel like sitting on a cushion, so I'm going to get a cushion to sit with. You can get your meditation cushions if you have one, or you can sit on a folded blanket or just a cushion from the couch like me if you like. So for this, you're going to take your right hand and you're going to take, make the jhana mudra. You're going to have the jhana mudra in both hands actually for this. Thumb and index finger together. You're going to turn it down on your right knee. And then with your left hand, you're going to make the jhana mudra as well. You're going to connect to your heart center, just a little low on your breastbone sort of um, at that point where your ribs come up and you're going to rest it there, maybe up a little bit higher to connect to your heart. And we'll sit like this maybe for about three minutes. Just connecting with the beauty of your heart. center, rest back into your big heart and your big elephant tracks. Lengthen up through your spine, draw your ears back over your shoulders.
Wow, that went way too fast. Could stay there all day. <laughs> so actually, so if you feel like me, you could stay here instead of lying down in Shavasana. You can stay with the mudra. Or you can rest back in Shavasana, lie down on your back. Take this time to receive and integrate your practice into your body. And as you lie down, if your low back is tender, you can always bend your knees, place your feet flat on the ground. So reflect back on today's class on Elephant Lakshmi and the story of the big elephant tracks. And look back on the generosity of the elephant tracks in your life, the abundance of your beautiful heart. And give yourself the gift of your own generosity now, of acknowledging your own big elephant tracks in your own life. So in what ways has, have the teachings of yoga transformed your life? and left big elephant tracks in your life. So often we're quick to notice the evidence of the big elephant tracks in other people's lives. And here's a little secret. Quite often the evidence of the elephant tracks we notice in other people's lives are the same elephant tracks that exist in our own lives. We just have an easier job, easier, sort of easier to notice them in other people's lives. But if you look closely enough, you're leaving those same elephant tracks in your life too. Tim and I had this amazing opportunity once to take elephants on a walk. And they have this incredibly magical and playful quality. And so let this search for the elephant tracks in your life be magical and playful and joyful. Just like the elephants, they go when they go walking, it's a joyful walk. They go down to the water and they bathe and they, they roll around in the water and they, they swim and they pour water on themselves. And it's just pure joy. And so let that elephant walk, let that surge through your own life be as joyful. I would love to hear about your elephant tracks. This week, when we share our experiences about the class, I would love 
for you to share about the big elephant tracks in your life that would just really even now thinking about it I'm it's bringing making me cry that would just break my heart wide open this week to hear about your elephant tracks If you could share those in the comments this week, I think that would be amazing to see how many elephant tracks we could create this week. So go ahead and wiggle and stretch out. And gather up the courage to share your elephant tracks in the comments. I'm so proud of you all for your yoga <laughs> and for living your yoga every day. <laughs> Bend your knees and roll to your side. <laughs> Thank you for your yoga. Namaste.